So welcome back Soapsters and in today's tutorial I'm going to go through what I have named the zipper swirl. Now I don't know if this technique is, is around and it's a kind of modified mantra swirl but I kind of like the way that this swirl worked and if anyone knows where it might be out there please let me know because um, I've not seen it before but I don't want to step on anyone's toes if this has been done before. So what you'll see in the beginning of this is I'm just um, taking the um, dividers out of a uh, of a mold here. Now, if you struggle with dividers and you, you struggle with um, the, the batter kind of seeping underneath, what I've actually done is I've poured a little bit of melt and pour into the bottom of this mold. And then I've put the dividers in and allowed the melt and pour to set up. Now, what that's done is essentially allowed me to um, keep the dividers sunk into the melt and pour so as i then pour my soap in it's not going to seep underneath the dividers i can keep all my colors very separate um, and it's a little bit more of a um a nicer way to work so um there's a little tip for you for working with dividers if you want to make sure you're not getting any um seepage underneath the divider there so this is my kind of standard recipe here that we're working with i'm soaping relatively cool because you do need a relatively long working time with this technique. Um, so essentially what it's going to be is you're going to divide your mold into two. And then on each of the sides, you are going to do a thin lines wall pour um, with a kind of a base color, a secondary color and an accent color. So for this one, I'm using gold um, mica, um, which obviously is a nice orange color and the standard color of the batter, along with a lovely teal color. And then I'm also using um, the gold color with the base color and then a purple. So the purple and the teal are working as my um, contrast colors and the rest of the soap is staying as it is. So all I'm doing here is allowing that oil to come down to temperature. Um, and it's the biggest thing. You need to make sure that you are patient. So I think that was about 42 degrees there. We've got 35 degrees there. I think we're all about ready to go. I mean, going to get this soap sorted. So this is a relatively small batch. I mean, it's, it's a thousand grams of oils um, plus the um, lye and the water. So you're looking about 1200 and it's a little bit big for the mold, but because we've got dividers and stuff going on in there, I just want to make sure we've got enough um, batter in order to do the, the pour with. So adding the line there, and you can see I'm just giving that a stir. I'm not going straight in with the stick blender. I want this to spend some time to be able to work with it. So rather than just going straight in with the stick blender, I'm giving it a stir and just seeing it kind of come together and where we are. Once the stick blender goes in and I burp it, make sure that it's all nice and there's no air bubbles in there. And we've got some air bubbles floating on the top. It's fine. Um, so what I'm going to do now is just bring this to an emulsion. And literally, and I want to show you this, that is probably about the maximum I'm going to uh, allow this to, uh, to come up to uh, emulsion. And you can see that I'm just checking to make sure that we've got no separation. Give it a couple of seconds on there just to make sure that there's no separation with the oils. Uh, I'm going to give it a little bit more of a blast here just to make sure that it is at that emulsion and it's not going to separate on me. That's done. So you can see how quickly that thousand grams of oil so a kilo of oils comes together quite quickly. You don't have to keep stick blending it. And you'll see people stick blend it until it becomes this thick mass. And you'll never get this technique and you'll never achieve a nice pour with this technique if you're working with a thick batter. It just, it just will not work. You won't have the time to be able to do it. So give as much as we can out of that one. Um, and I'm just again, sprinkling that back on, just making sure, as I say, and I'm going to reiterate it, a thin trace, a thin um, homogenized batter is, is what you're going to need for this. Um, and if it's not thin enough, you'll never get the time. So I'm just taking some time here. I haven't stick blended it to, to infinity and beyond. I've taken it just to emulsion. So I've got a little bit of time. And again, I'm, I'm, I'm going to err on the side of caution. So I'm just going to give it a couple more seconds. And that really should do it. I can't see any oils floating on the top and it doesn't seem to be breaking up on the stick blender. So we're, we're pretty good on that one. Um, but again, I wanted to show you that in real time because often I don't show you the process of making the batter. 
we kind of start off about halfway and there's some really important things that you need to do. So what we're going to do is we're going to separate off our batter into our first thin lines pour. And the way a thin lines pour works is you're going to create your colours in separate jugs. You're then going to have a slightly bigger jug and you're going to pour in each of those colours separately down the wall of the jug to create essentially rings of colour. Um, and if you do it down the side of the jug, so at a side adjacent to the spout rather than opposite or at the spout, um, you'll get a better thin lines pour because it'll pull the colours in different directions and you'll get lots of nice thin lines. So I pour two of these off and we're just going to keep one as the uh, batter colour. And you can see how nice and thin this batter is. And it's going to sit there for a little while, but it's still going to stay nice and thin for us. And that's the real kind of important bit with this technique. So first colour here is this beautiful teal colour. It's um, now I'm testing some colours out from a uh, from a company, so um, I'd need to really look these up. So I'm not going to give you what the colours were. But again, use the technique for your colours. Your You don't have to use two or three or four or five. You can use whatever you want to use in this one. I'm just kind of doing it in the way that I, that I kind of think works best for this technique. But take it, use it and, and see how it works for you. So this next colour is an antique gold colour and I kind of like this one. It goes to this kind of really beautiful orange colour in the final design, obviously with an opaque cold presser soap. It's going to lose some of the shine to it, but I kind of quite like the the um, contrast between these two colours and then with a little bit of the batter colour in there as well, um, which I will lighten a bit with a, with a, a touch of titanium dioxide and, and we'll be good on that one. Um, so get these all mixed in and just make sure that they are fully mixed. And I have predisposed all of my oils, um, sorry, all of my micas in oil before I started. And then I've got some titanium dioxide here, which I actually keep mixed in a bottle with, um, glycerin, distilled water, preservative, um, and some steel ball bearings. And then what I'll do is I'll just pour off a smidge of this to lighten it as a base or a kind of transition color. And uh, we'll uh, we'll get started on getting this thin lines pour done. So again, you can see the batter in that bowl is still thin. It's still pourable. It's still um, just this very very thin trace. And you do need to have that work time with it for this technique. It's 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 quite important that you do recognise that. So I've said it five six times now. And I'll probably say it another six times before we finish the video. Uh, so let's get this white stirred in here. And again, because it's pretty dispersed in um, water and glycerin, and I think the glycerin is quite important here because it keeps the suspension a, a better um, than just water itself. Um, I don't find I get glycerin rivers with it, even though I'm adding additional glycerin, it doesn't seem to affect it. Um, I seem to be able to get it stirred in quite nicely. And I'm only really just lightening this, so I've got a lighter. Um, color that's not the kind of like standard base color i have it's just that wee bit lighter and it's going to contrast quite nicely so let's give these a quick stir again and just make sure that everything is neat and tidy and uh, fully stirred all the colors are in and i'm actually thinking i'll do the uh the other color while we're at it just get it ready for the next pour And this is the purple colour. Now, this was an amalgamation of um, a red, a blue, and then a, a, a violet colour. I just wanted something that was going to kind of work with the green. And when you're looking at the colour chart, um, you get colours that are opposite, which are complementary. You then get colours that are adjacent, where they become analogous colours. Colour theory is one of these things. But if you go back to the 19, um, 1990s, green and purple was a big thing and um i always liked green and purple together so i thought why not i'm gonna, I'm gonna bring a little bit of nostalgia back for me personally so this is how we set up for the pour we're going to pour down the side of the mold now this batter is thin so you need to be a little bit careful with it because what it's going to do is it's going to hit the bottom and slide down underneath the other color so be a little bit gentle with it be a little bit careful with it because if you go too fast, you won't get these lovely rings happening. What will happen is it'll just sink straight to the bottom and then you won't be able to get this lovely thin lines pour. Um, but this is working really nicely. I'm working with no order here particularly. I'm just making sure that, that 
any two adjacent colours are not the same colour, um, which would be daft, really, wouldn't it? Um, but yeah, a bit of this one, bit of that one, bit of this one, bit of that one, bit of the white one. Um, and it's only going to be the three colours there. It's only going to be the green, the gold, and then the uh, base colour with the white. Um, now, I'm specifically pouring way too much into this jug just to show you what happens. Ideally, when you do this technique, you want to fill your jug up to about halfway. Halfway is the maximum you need to go because when you then go to pour this out, um, you can't get a nice angle on it and you can't move it very quickly. So um, I've poured this right up to the maximum and I'll show you exactly why we don't do this when we're working with um, a thin lines pour. So half a jug is all you need for a thin lines pour. You can always go back in and re-pour um, a second jug as long as you've got that trace, the right consistency for working with. Um, my goodness, man, I really am going for this one today and I'm going to spill this all onto the uh, onto my nice new tabletop and I'm just going to make a utter mess with it. But do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> and you'll see here in a minute how this goes all over the place, but it's a good learning point. So what I'm going to do now, I tried to lift it up because I knew it was way too full and it's just not going to happen. So I need to pull this down the wall, which I'm going to try and do here. And you'll just see it just blow both sides, which is fine. So I'm just moving it backwards and forwards up and down the length of the jug. Sorry, up and down the length of the mold with the jug. Um, we're going to have a little tidy up here because we have spilled the right lot. We just want to make sure we're not too mucky. Um, and we're getting these lovely thin lines. The slower you pour and the faster you move, the thinner the lines will be. Okay, but you can see that as we've poured down the side, all of those colours are pouring out in lovely lines. So as you come this way, the predominant colour on the top of the jug or the, or the right hand side of the jug will be the, the major colour. And then as you move back up the jug, it's the colour on the left hand side that becomes the major colour. Um, so you just keep going with this up and down the jug. You can go as quickly or as slowly as you want to. I've sped up there and you can see how they're coming out a little bit slower. Uh, sorry, a little bit thinner. So again, the faster you move this. And we're going to take this right up to the top of the mould. As we pull out our dividers, you are going to get a drop in the um, quantity in the mould. So just bear that in mind that you want a little bit more batter. Um, because as you take things out, you're going to pull batter out. So. Let's give this a quick tidy up. And then we're going to turn it around and we're going to do the other side. It's exactly the same pour. It's exactly the same technique. This time we're going to alternate between the gold, the white colour and the purple. And we're going to do a thin lines pour on the other side now. So now we've taken all the uh, dividers out of this one and we're on to the actual swirl itself. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to follow a pattern. So if the pink is the mould, this green line is tracing out the pattern that I'm actually making. And you'll notice that I'm stopping definitively at every bottom part. And at the wall of the mould, I'm moving up very slowly as to disturb as little soap as possible. Then come across again and up, across again and up, across again and up. And we're just making what is essentially a mantra swirl, but we're doing it very angularly. 
we're giving no curls, we're giving no swirls. And you can see this beautiful pattern that happens on the top where you get this crisscross of colours in the middle. And I find it absolutely beautiful. So it's a modified mantra. Um, and I think it just looks like a, a zip or a, a, a coat zip or zipper. So hence the zipper swell. And if anyone knows if this has been done before or if anyone has done this and it's got a different name, please let me know in the comments below. But um, hopefully that's, a, that's a, a different swell that you can use. Um, and we'll move on to the cut very shortly. And here we are back to the cut. And I've already taken one little section off. And I'm going to take another section off here. You're going to cut this very much like you will a mantra. So you're going to get the better um, pattern, I feel, if you cut it um, into the size of the bar that you want. And then you turn it 90 degrees and you cut through. So what I'm just going to do here is take this back to my bar size. And I'm going to cut one of these as though you were cutting it as a normal log and not the way you would cut a mantra. So this is the top of the bar here, and I'm just cutting straight down through the top of the bar. And I think this is a, a very pretty bar cut this way as it stands, which looks a little bit like this. There we go. It's fairly pretty, but it's, it's nothing special. The better bar you get, I'll just tidy this one up here first of all, but the better bar you get is if you actually, rather than cutting through like a, a log, you cut it through by turning it as though the log was standing on one end and cutting through the log horizontally. So if I go back to my other bar here and you'll see here how I've placed it onto it looks like the other bars I've basically cut through as a log. I'm going to take one edge off here. And then what we'll do is very quickly cut a second one. And this is for me really where the magic happens with this cut. And we'll cut through here now. And wait for it, because I think this is absolutely stunning. And there we have it. So I really like the way that these colors interact right down the middle of the mold. You can choose to use different colors. You can choose to use the same colors. I think as long as you've got those nice thin lines and you're moving them about, this looks stunning. And there you have the final soap in all of its glory. So if you've enjoyed this video, please give it a like. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. It really helps me grow and it allows me to make more videos and tutorials for all of you. When you subscribe, don't forget to click the bell icon to get notified when a new video is uploaded. And thanks a lot, Soapsters. I'll see you again next time.